Hello and welcome to this session on developing the pecuniary resource use measurement instrument. Albert Einstein once said, not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that can be counted counts. And that really has resonance for this part of the project in as much as what is not measured certainly cannot be counted. So this is a brief overview of how the session is going to run. I'm Dr Jo Thorne from the University of Bristol and I'm going to be introducing it. I'm then going to hand over to Irina to talk about the, absolute, the actual development of the instrument. We're then going to look at each of the four work packages which were designed to develop different modules in turn. So we'll be looking at health and social care, criminal justice and education, employment and productivity and patient, family and informal care modules. I'm then going to hand over to Luke Janssen to talk about the preliminary testing of the pecuniary resource use measurement instrument and to Claudia who's going to look at the future linguistic assessment. So what was the purpose of this, this part of the project? This had a very ambitious uh, aim. We aimed to develop a self-reported resource use measurement instrument that, was, that had an underlying consistent harmonized unit cost approach. Um, but it was aimed to be standardized at an international level, harmonized and validated and generic so that it could be used in a wide variety of contexts. And then it fits into the rest of the project because it builds on the work done in Horizontal Activity 1, the identification of the appropriate items, and Horizontal Activity 2, which defines the items. And it is very closely linked to Horizontal Activity 4, um, in which the harmonised unit cost approach was, was developed. And this part of the project was led by a working group. So it was led by the University of Maastricht in collaboration with the University of Bristol and University of Vienna. Um, and the other partners that were involved were the Erasmus University from Rotterdam and the Corvinus University from Budapest. Okay, uh, I will take you through the steps of the developments of the Pecunia Realm instrument. Um, as you can see on this slide, uh, the development process was divided into six steps, which resulted in the first uh, draft Pecunia instrument, which was then later used for the preliminary validation and um, after the preliminary validation, we uh, developed the second draft instrument, which will be the result of the whole Pecunia project. And I will take you through the steps um, of the development first. So the first step was uh, to actually define the attributes uh, of the instrument that we set out to develop. And based on the objectives of the Pecunia project, we set out to develop a generic multi-sectoral instrument, which would allow for collecting broader resource use data in multiple societal sectors and would be applicable to any setting of care and any intervention. However, it is important to note that we use mental health um, as illustrative example for the development and also for the preliminary testing of the instrument, similarly to all other uh, pecunia tools that will be discussed later. Uh, furthermore, um, the initial version of the instrument was developed for the adult population in the English language and as a pen and paper version. However, as will be also discussed later in this presentation, for the preliminary testing of the instrument, we translated it into Dutch and German languages as well. So after, uh, the, after we defined the attributes of the instrument, we conducted a scoping review to identify resource use measurement recommendations in the literature. And uh, we developed a framework of aspects that are important to take into account uh, when developing a ROM instrument. For example, what is an optimal recall period or whether it's possible to use uh, proxies to uh, fill it out for someone else. And using these recommendations, we developed a harmonized methodological approach in the form of an Excel template, which was used by every work package lead to develop their own RAM module later on. And this methodological approach was presented in a workshop with health economists in July, 2019. Uh, the next step um, builds upon horizontal activity one and two, which we already discussed previously in a different session. Um, as um, discussed, uh, based on a systematic review um, and expert survey, we defined uh, main cost drivers in each sector um, and defined them in, as um, harmonized units of analysis. And within Horizontal Activity 3, we matched the main cost drivers with either questions from existing ROM instruments, or if those were not available, we developed um, new questions. 
Um, and since every Pecunia ROM module was developed by a different working group, it was um, important to harmonize the module in terms of phrasing, format, order of the questions and the answer options to make sure it's um, a cohesive um, instrument that makes sense when filling it in. And finally, we also conducted a formal wording review on professional English editing. Good morning, I'm presenting the work package one model, which focuses on health and social care services um, on behalf of the development team, which you can see listed here. So what is the structure of the work package one model focusing on so health and social care services? It um, contains all three main sections, which are the residential care section, the outpatient care section and medication section. The residential care section uh, contains 11 yeah. items, for example, nursing home, hospital, or the hospice and palliative care um, items. The outpatient care section contains 20 items which are subdivided into the sections daycare, emergency care services, helplines, non-emergency care services, support and self-help groups and vocational services. The recall period was set at three months for all the items, whereas the measurement units were different. So nights was used for the res residential care section, whereas day was used for daycare and vocational services, and contacts was used for emergency care services, helplines, non-emergency care services, support and self-help groups. Um, some methodological reflections. Well, we faced some methodological challenges and overcame these also finally. Um, first, we had quite some items in our mod, um, um, RAM model, so we had to include mechanisms to increase the reliability and the efficiency of the information game. So, for example, we would include two-stage questions, the possibility to skip questions and sections, and the provision of examples, and further it's planned to have different extensive RAM models um, available. So in a further extensive one, it's possible to divide between and um, distinguish between privately and publicly funded services. Further, the linkage with the Pecunia service unit costing templates um, was a challenge to identify and use the same matching unit for the service use. And last but not least, the linkage of the, with the desktop Pecunia coding system was also um, a major challenge to allow finally the definition and the comparison of services based on their activities. So I will guide you through the work package two results, which contain the criminal justice and the education sector. And as there are two different sectors, we also have developed two different RAM modules. Regarding the education sector, the highest level of education, the current educational status, the productivity losses, and the use of additional educational services, such as tutoring or counseling, are included in the Pecunia RAM instrument. And for the safety and justice module, the contacts with the police, fire and rescue and legal services, the material damage caused by respondents, such as a theft or vandalism, but and also incarceration in jail or a forensic institution are included. And the problems or the issues that we encountered regarding the uh, educational sector are that the educational sector differs per country, so harmonization can only take place uh, to a certain extent, because it also needs to be uh, applicable per country. And the preliminary testing only took place with, in the adult population, so educational resource use is less, might be less relevant for this setting. And for the criminal justice sector, the resource use might be a sensitive topic to openly talk about and to share the results with. And respondents may also interact uh, in, the, in the sector in several ways. So they could either be a victim of crime or act as a perpetrator. So that also results in the recommendations we have for further research um, for the education. It's also important that the Pecunia RAM instrument is tested with the, among a more relevant population with uh, children or adolescents. And for criminal justice, it's important to define an appropriate unit of analysis as the cost of crime can also affect people outside the respondent of the pecunia run instrument. My name is Kimberly Hubens and I'm a PhD candidate at the Erasmus University of Rotterdam. And I will be presenting to you on the RUM module on employment and productivity. Uh, first, a little bit on the development of this RUM module. 
As part, of the, uh, as part of the Pecunia project, we have performed a systematic review on measurement instruments of productivity loss, and we have identified 42 unique instruments. We assess these instruments individually um, on three criteria on the suitability for economic evaluations. Firstly, uh, instruments should include all relevant components of productivity loss of paid and unpaid work. So um, absence from work or absenteeism, reduced productivity while at work or presenteeism, and productivity loss related to unpaid work. Secondly, instruments should provide quantified data for these components, so for instance, in hours, days, or percentages. And thirdly, um, instruments should be suitable for using common valuation methods for productivity loss. So the human capital method or the friction cost method. We found that the IMTA productivity cost questionnaire, the IPCQ, met all these criteria. And therefore, we have incorporated the IPCQ in the Pecunia RAM module on employment and productivity. Now, slight modifications were made to the IPCQ in order to harmonize these with other RAM modules. The final ROM module on employment and productivity consists of the following elements. A brief introduction to the module, two general questions, six questions on paid work, namely on uh, normal work hours and days, absence from work, and reduced productivity while at work. And finally, three questions on unpaid work. So productivity loss related to unpaid work. And you can think of household tasks and volunteer work for that. Harmonization efforts were made between the RAM modules, and um, it must be noted that the original IPCQ recall period differs from the modules of the Pecunia RAM. The Pecunia RAM um, uses a recall period of three months, while the IPCQ originally used a recall period of four weeks. Um, now, little is known about the recall of productivity loss. Uh, and therefore, we recommend to study optimal recall periods further, specifically for absenteeism, presenteeism, and also unpaid work. My name is Valentin Brodsky from uh, Corvinus University of uh, Budapest, and uh, I would like to briefly introduce you the, the patient and family module of the Pecunia Research Use Measurement uh, Questionnaire. Uh, <clears throat> London School of Economics and Corvinus University, together as, as Work Package 4, developed this uh, uh, self-reported uh, module as part of the uh, whole Pecunia questionnaire. So this, the patient module measures the, the frequency of use of cost items that are incurred by the, by the patient or, or the patient's uh, family and uh, not fall under under any other uh, uh, pecunia uh, uh, sector. So for example, uh, expenditure or on private health care services or copayment for health care services uh, are included in, in other uh, module. So the list of uh, included uh, cost items uh, was compiled uh, based on a <clears throat> systematic literature search and, uh, and then uh, finalized and, uh, and, and consolidated based on uh, as economics expert uh, opinion. So the module uh, consists of two uh, sections, the informal care section and the other personal expenses uh, section. The informal care section contains a single, single item, the duration of uh, unpaid care received by the patient. The, <clears throat> the other expenses module uh, contains uh, 11 different uh, uh, cost items and the out-of-pocket expenditure uh, on them. And this module also includes an open response option where, where the patient can enter uh, any out-of-pocket expen expenses uh, he or she is uh, considered relevant for the given disease. I would like to show briefly uh, one, one lessons learned during the, the questionnaire uh, develop or, or development of the patient module. The literature search showed us that, uh, that the economic analysis are, are very heterogeneous in terms of uh, patient-relevant cost items included in the analysis. So 
In particular, the inclusion of informal care and travel costs can be considered a, a common practice, but uh, the inclusion of other, other items, other cost items are, are very rare and accident. So, and this makes uh, difficult to compare uh, economic analysis studies uh, uh, measuring patient costs uh, across uh, even in the same disease or country. So in this module, we this module was designed to include uh, all relevant cost items in order to improve the, the comparability of health economic analysis using this uh, questionnaire. So after developing the first draft Pecunia RAM instrument, we also organized an expert workshop in November 2019 with health economists. Um, and the health economists stressed that the Having a standardized RAM instrument is very relevant and of added value to the field. Uh, however, the full version would probably contain too much details and would therefore not be applicable to every setting. Um, but the Pecunia RAM instrument could serve also as a repository of questions. Um, in the standardization is definitely an added value. However, it's also important to account for cost crunchy differences in systems such as the healthcare and the educational system. And the health economists also mentioned that having a manual so that uh, could guide them on how to use the pecunia ROM instrument would be very helpful. And the uh, plan validation activities also to develop a compatible costing tool were also seen as an added value of the Pecunia project. Next to testing with health economists, we also test the Pecunia RAM instrument with um, potential respondents. So we executed think aloud interviews in four countries, in Austria, Germany, the UK, and in the Netherlands. And former mental health care users and informal caregivers completed the Pecunia RAM instrument while they had to verbalize their thoughts. Um, and therefore also the Think aloud interviews were translated to German and Dutch so that the respondents could fill it in in their national. And the findings were that we were able to identify gaps between what we as health economists want to measure and what the respondent thinks is being asked. Um, also, more if a respondent had to recall more resources. It also increased the task difficulty. Furthermore, we noticed that there was a thin line between too much and too little information. Sometimes a respondent one was not sure what exactly was meant and was helped with more information. And on the other hand, sometimes a respondent was overwhelmed with uh, all the examples. So it's important to find a balance between that. And quantifying resources, for example, for productivity losses, as they are not exactly measured can also bring certain struggles. So this is important to take into account when further finalizing the Pecunia RAM instrument. Well, as it was mentioned before, a translatability assessment is taking place. Um, this is done in preparation for the instrument for the formal translation process. Um, and it, this is conducted in collaboration with the Oxford University um, Innovation and is taking place in two stages. Stage one is a wording review and stage two is standard formal translatability assessment and the concept elaboration. Um, stage one has successfully been completed, whereas stage two is currently ongoing. So in conclusion, we have developed a resource use measure measurement instrument that is suitable for use in trial-based economic evaluations in the adult population. We've adopted a modular structure so that the instrument can be adapted to specific settings. So for example, you could drop the education part if that wasn't relevant to your particular study. The instrument is applicable and has been tested in multiple European countries, and it's underpinned by a consistent harmonized unit cost development tool. So there are of course further steps that we would want to undertake. We hope that it will be well used um, and that it will provide comparable results across studies. But there may be other sectors that are also relevant, for example, transport and the environment. And other further steps that we want to um, take, take forward are a formal, more formal validation steps, development of proxy child and online versions, formal translations into multiple European languages, um, and then looking at how, it, how well it 
adapt to different settings, for example, different disease areas, patient groups and countries. So thank you for listening.